Okay, it's uh, time for another Bull in the Basement. This is a big month and a big week, especially for our friends at the Ride for Roswell. I uh, am very fond of it. It is my most favorite fundraiser in the community that I am part of uh, annually. And joining us now is the brains behind the Ride for Roswell, the founder himself, Mitch Flynn. Mitch, thanks for doing Bull in the Basement. And, you know, a lot of people just assume because we're doing Bull in the Basement that I don't ever leave my basement. Not true. I have to leave to do the ride for Roswell. Well, no, I mean, I guess I could do it virtually if I wanted to, but it's not that fun if you do it virtually. So, yes, I leave the basement to do the ride for Roswell, which, of course, as I mentioned, was your brainchild uh, back in, what, 1996 now? I mean, do you do you pinch yourself? Do you shake your head? Are you, like, not believing to this point that it is blown up to the point that it is today? Yeah, well, this is 20, year 26. Yeah. And the actual... Uh, started it was 1995 so take it back actually so this was 27 years ago this is the 26th event we had a year to plan it and a small group we really didn't know exactly what we were doing you ever had that feeling okay all, all the time <laughs> well we did too and uh so between uh, pizza and beer and hoping crossing our fingers uh we had the first event on june 29th 1996 we got about a thousand riders and raised uh, just north of a hundred thousand dollars. So that was a start. That's a heck of a start. Uh, yeah, I, I, well, you know what? Because we didn't we didn't know what to expect. We had we really literally had no idea. Uh, this is pre email, pre internet, back in the day when uh, communication was a, a lot of folders on the uh, desk at your dry cleaner or your favorite convenience store and you just hope that people picked them up and somebody did something with them so you don't know you know there's really no way to measure it it was you know people registered but they brought their money at the, the day of so unlike today when everybody registers online etc cetera, etc cetera. so it was a big a big surprise and uh you know when you pull something off that you don't know whether it's gonna work or not of course you know it's really kind of a kick it was so it was great uh, year one of that, a thousand riders on a hundred thousand dollars is remarkable. I mean, I okay, done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've accomplished my goal, but certainly yeah. it's come much further than that over the last approaching now 30 years of the ride for us. Well, Mitch Flynn is with us. So, yeah, give me some stats. Um, sure. How many well, riders over this amount of time have we seen? What kind of money have we generated for the ride for us? Uh, it's generated more than 60 million dollars so far. That's through this year. And uh, this year we're on track to raise about four and a half million, which would be compared to last year, the pandemic year, the true pandemic year, we raised about three, six. And then in 2019, we raised five, seven, I think. So we were on track pre-pandemic to raise uh, the magic number of six million. But of course, COVID-19 had other plans and uh, we had to kind of, uh, uh, play it by ear as everybody else did last year. Um, Mitch Flynn joining us, who was the founder of the Ride for Roswell. Of course, this weekend it's back at UB if you want to be, uh, yeah. but there's all kinds of options and, and the options and the creativity of the folks at the ride that were able to, with COVID, adjust. That was a pretty amazing undertaking, the way they pulled that off, where people could ride from all different spots around Western New York. That was impressive, I must say. Yeah. And, and now, you know, you can go back to UB if you want and kind of back to what it was a couple of years ago and how it's been for a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Talk a little yeah. bit about that, working through COVID and now what you learned through working through COVID that you have now applied and continue to apply even in 2021. Yeah, well, so... Uh... 2020 was the 25th anniversary year, so everybody had high hopes. We planned to use the entire football stadium at UB for the Celebration of Hope, which was the Friday night event, uh, with lining up big name entertainment, all the things you would expect of a, a silver anniversary, right? No, <laughs> it didn't quite work out that way. So you know, March 13th came, came and everybody started to shut down and after two months of spectacular anticipatory fundraising, everything just went quiet for about two months, nothing. I mean, nobody, well, nobody really knew what was going on. Nobody knew what, nobody had any handle at all on what you could do. People would say, you cannot ride bikes in a group because the plume of your respiration will infect other people behind you. It just, you know, all kinds of bizarre stuff, scary stuff, unknown. The, un the unknown was upon us, right? 
So I will give all the credit and take none uh, to the, I'll give all the credit to the ride team at Roswell who runs the event because it fell on them to figure out what to do. You know, so, you know, you, you're in an entirely unknown, you're in the total unknown, right? You ever been there? <laughs> right. <laughs> so credit to them, they figured out, uh, they pushed the date back from uh, late June, which was the original date push it back into August, gave everybody a ride your own way option, which was great because then you could be by yourself or whatever you wanted to do. Change, change the locations and created, a, a UB was one, Grand Island was one, Akron was one, um, made the start staggered so that people weren't clustered together in crowds, made masks uh, mandatory for congregating in the, in the start points managed it uh, and people really responded to it and the fundraising you know for the pandemic year was really really good so uh, credit to the ride team for doing all that uh, of course and credit western new york i mean we have been such a resilient community over the years and and are maybe per capita safe to say one of if not the most generous town in this great country of ours. I mean, we continue to see the giving uh, nonstop in this community and certainly continues with the ride for Roswell. So again, take us back to the origin of this. Uh, yeah. Why? why I mean, there, there's hundreds of um, charitable foundations and organizations here in Western New York. Why was Roswell your choice? Okay. Um, uh, there are a few reasons for that. Uh, let's see. I, I, uh, own an advertising agency and we were hired by Roswell in 1989 to do a video. Actually, it wasn't even a video. Uh, it was a slideshow transferred to video. Remember slideshows? <laughs> Vaguely. <laughs> like dating, <laughs> I'm dating myself. Uh, and in the course of it, I met uh, Ann Joya, uh, whose daughter, uh, Catherine, was uh, going through cancer at the time and uh, interviewed her, took pictures, got to know her a little bit. And then uh, sadly, Catherine died shortly afterwards. And then in response to that, Anne and her sister-in-law, Donna, formed uh, what was called the Roswell Alliance uh, back in 1990. And they invited 50 people in the, from the community to uh, join them. And they invited me, which uh, I was you know, real flattered by. I thought, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I thought, sure, it's, you know, I liked, I liked uh, Anne a lot and thought, um, liked Roswell a lot from what I knew about it. So I, I got involved with that volunteer board and quickly found I had nothing to do. <laughs> <There> was, <laughs> it was just was, you know, I mean, I, I shouldn't quite say it like that, but nothing that really uh, appealed to me, you know, it was black tie dinners and stuff like that. Things that you can, you know, you know what they're like. So um, vaguely, I, yeah, right. You know, and different things like that. Um, so I thought um, I had done some other charity bike rides uh, locally and also out of town. And I, I've been a cyclist my entire, pretty much my entire life. I biked across country in, in 1975 and had done a lot of long distance touring and, and was just into biking. So I thought, well, maybe uh, uh, this is a model that could work. And I pitched it to the Alliance uh, in 1995 and uh, gave them a complete outline of how it would work, uh, pretty much soup to nuts, the, the whole playbook for it, which uh, I was able to create um, because my wife left me. No, I, should, I shouldn't say it like that. <laughs> we were on vacation and she left me for the day. Uh, that's really what happened. Uh, she didn't want to be around me because it was raining. So I spent the entire day doing the outline, brought it back to Buffalo. This was on vacation in Maine, brought it back to Buffalo, pitched it, uh, waited for a long time to hear back, not knowing what was going on. And I thought, eh, this is too long for a positive answer, but finally got a positive answer. And that was the beginning of it. That was in the fall of 1995. And we started, a, we had got a volunteer group. What, besides the, my interest in biking, what got me uh, and my connection with the volunteer group was my, Father-in-law had died of cancer uh, in 1991, and uh, the impact of that and on our family, like so many stories you hear, you hear this all the time, of course, you, know, you may have the same experience in your family, Bill, um, was another factor in it too. So those things all kind of merged together, the volunteer thing, the biking thing in my family to um, plant the seed for it. Uh, so that's basically how it started. And that is sort of the beauty of the ride for Roswell, that, you know, in addition to 
being so sort of open armed to everyone. I mean, most people can ride a bike, uh, to, yeah. you know, all ages, all walks of life. Sadly, most people have been affected one way or the other by cancer, either a family member or a friend or an acquaintance or even a favorite celebrity. At yeah. some point, we've all somehow felt cancer. And with this amazing group that we have at Roswell Park Comprehensive Care Center, uh, Cancer Center, uh, and what they do here in Western New York and how they are not only nationwide renowned, but globally renowned for what they do. It just makes it so much easier um, to be a part of. Um, how does, to your knowledge, Ride for Roswell compare to other cycling fundraisers around the country? Yeah, I can tell you a little bit about what I know of that. Um, it is, let's see, well, the pre-pandemic uh, ranking of top charity rides had it at number eight in the nation, uh, which uh, I think number one was the Pan Mass Challenge for the Dana-Farber Cancer Center in Boston, which my, raised- My brother's ridden in that, actually. Yeah, yeah, times, that's, yeah. that's been around uh, longer than the ride for Roswell by maybe five or 10 years. And that raises a, a staggering amount of money, like 40 or $50 million a year. I don't have the latest statistics on it. So that was number one, but then there are, uh, there's Pelotonia, which is uh, for the Ohio State University Cancer Center in Columbus, that's another big one. Um, those two are probably the most noteworthy. In Canada, there's the Ride to Conquer Cancer, which is out of the Queen Margaret Cancer Center in Toronto, which also raises in the 10 to $20 million range each year. But, but I, you know, it's funny, the funny thing is though, these are all pre-pandemic statistics and just the nature of how things have played out in the last two years. I'm not current with it. I don't know who is, just that things just really kind of scrambled. So, but that's going back. So I guess the bottom line is the ride was in the top 10 um, rising. Um, and if we had not had a pandemic in 2020, probably would have been up a little bit higher too. Uh, Mish Flynn founded the Ride for Roswell back in 1995 and is part of Bull in the Basement. I've loved the Ride for Roswell since I came to Buffalo and got involved in it over the years. It's just incredibly community driven and it feels like community when you're there and you meet all kinds of new people and the stories are never the same. Um, I wanted to ask you in terms of your experience throughout the last 27 years, Go over if you can. This is a very difficult question because it's gonna it's gonna really rack your brain. But I'm gonna ask you to do that because one of the things I love most about it is, in terms of community, the teams that get formed and the teams have great names and they have great we'll call them uniforms, the T-shirts that they all create for themselves and really stand out. And it's almost like like an Olympic feel almost, you know, if there's 206 or seven countries in the Olympics and they all have their different uniforms, uh, it's kind of, it looks kind of like that when the big group joins everybody at, at UB and has over the years. So for you, was there, or have you, or can you recall a favorite maybe team name or team uniform you've seen over the years? Oh yeah, for sure. Actually, it's a, that's a perfect question. Thank you. It's like throwing me a, a slow pitch. Okay. Well, my favorite, my favorite team name is uh, a team that formed around uh, Notre Dame uh, University graduates. And it's the Fighting Irish Fighting Cancer, which, which I just thought, you know, what a perfect name that is. And the captain of the team is a friend of mine named Bob Drajan. He's a retired public school teacher in Buffalo. And also one of the event's top 10 fundraisers uh, as we speak today. He's, he's a dogged uh, recruiter and fundraiser and uh, hit that, you know, all kind of goes together with that being my favorite team. Another one is called Miles for Monica, which is formed around a cancer survivor named uh, Monica Farnham, who lives up in Niagara County. And she rides with her friends and her family. And uh, cumulatively, they are a team that's raised more than a quarter million dollars in their history. So there's another one. A third is the Kids Just Want to Have Fun team led by Joe Curatolo and his wife, Kathy Curatolo. And their uh, focus is on pediatric cancer and funding um, services and uh, research for, for kids. And the, the connection there is Kathy is a pediatric cancer survivor and still to this day, 
her appointments at Roswell are in the pediatrics department. And she's, I won't say her age, but she's not, <laughs> <laughs> she's not a kid anymore. So, so those are three, but uh, there have been, oh man, um, the West Valley Glow Riders back in the early days of the ride. This is back in 1997 or 1998. These are the guys who are taking care of dismantling the nuclear waste down, down in West Valley. So glow riders, you know, obviously kind of a joke, a joke about what they do. So you get that. Um, there was a, another team out of Olean in the early days called Blast the Mass, which formed around a, a, a physician who had a, a glioblastoma, a brain cancer, and who, who died from that. And part of the treatment was, you know, the, uh, approach of blasting the mass of his tumor to do that. So therefore the name, and that, that was a really spirited team that had about 30 or 40 people. Um, so those are just ones that come to mind, but that's actually a great point because it does have sort of a, you know, the teams have tents and they have a spread. Uh, they have great names. Um, they have t-shirts that they have a contest for. It's actually, it's a very cool aspect of the event. I was going to say that, for a lot of people is the incentive, the after party. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I know uh, the kids want to just want to have fun team has the best after party with two or three masseuses and a, a full bar with Bloody Marys that are, you know, basically a drink with lunch attached to it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the after parties are great too. Uh, it's never too late to be a part of this. Rideforoswell.org has all your information if you want to be a part of it. And I know, and, and help me through this too, because there are there are some people out there that might be new to this, uh, that may even be from out of the area, and maybe are solo riders. There are ways, if you are a solo rider, you can certainly enter as a solo rider, but there are ways to get teamed up with teams if you like too, if you're a solo rider, right? Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, actually on the ride website, um, you can join a team. Uh, you might know somebody or you might just like the name of the team or you might like what the, the route they're doing or know the captain or whatever like that. So you can do that. You can ride solo too. And a lot of people do. A lot of people are riding uh, their own way, uh, meaning that they're not actually riding in the organized uh, event on Saturday so much as they are putting in miles on their own. So there's a lot of, a lot of options. It's interesting too, because some people might think, oh, it's, you know, I, I'm not really in great shape and I don't cycle that much. I don't ride my bike much. Well, the beauty for me for the Ride for Roswell, I'm in that boat. I mean, I have a very nice bike. I bought my wife a very nice bike for the ride for when we did it uh, a couple of years ago. And I, we had bikes prior to that. But the beauty of the Ride for Roswell is you kind of go at your own pace. It's not a race. Sometimes you bunch up with some other fun folks that you maybe didn't know and you just kind of happen on the ride along to, hey, these people sound fun, or you meet them at the PB&J tent or whatever along the way. That's and, true. Yeah. And, and, and it's not a race. It's you just go at your own pace, and, and it's just so enjoyable, especially with the routes that you can go on that maybe some of you in Western New York have never even seen or been a part of geographically in Western New York. So, uh, again, more reasons to, to be a part of this, right? Yeah, actually, you know, you're, you're right on, Paul, about people not experiencing or having seen a lot of the routes. Some of them are along the Niagara River, like through Niawanda and Iowa Park. And out, out, you know, east of UB, there's beautiful roads out in, in Clarence that people probably have never, <clears throat> never seen or, or heard of. So yeah, there's a lot of discovery, just how nice it is around Western New York. One of, one of the things we did back in uh, 2015 was introduce a ride across the border to Canada uh, for the first time, which went to Niagara Falls and then came back on the US side, which was about 45 miles. And that was uh, a big uh, leap for the event. That single route by itself raised almost 20 or 25 percent of the event events total fundraising. It was so popular. Uh, of course, no nobody is going over the border right now, as you may have may have heard, and uh, so that's off for this year. But hopefully, that'll be back next year too. But yeah, that and that's another example of people discovering things they might never have seen before. And really, you know, what that does, I think, is uh, kind of open you up a little bit. Not besides being a lot of fun, and like any time you go someplace new. I think part of what it does that, that I, I see as one of the uh, side effects of the event is get people more into biking. And 
it's just fun and yeah. it's, it's, it's fun. It's good for you. It's a good way to meet people, you know, make friends. So it, you know, there are a lot of um, aspects to the event that are peripheral in some sense, but, but are really uh, what, what makes it so, so much, so much fun for people. And again, selfishly, Mitch, you know, a lot of, I, I don't think I had rode a bike 30 miles ever in my life until I did the ride for Roswell. So selfishly, it's a little bit of an accomplishment as well. You can celebrate. I mean, yeah. there's so many different experiences all, you know, as a part of the ride, like the send off and the welcome back are yeah. just super cool things to be a part of. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I, I think you're right about it. a lot of people do a route that they think they don't have the legs for and they pull it off and there's a real sense of accomplishment for that. Yeah, for sure. Do you know of people that, and I don't know what the numbers would be, maybe you don't either, but I'm sure there are people that maybe are expats that come back for the ride for Roswell or even for people that live out of town, but know people here or have some sort of an affiliation for the ride for Roswell. I guess my question is how many people come from out of town to do this ride? I don't know the exact number, but a lot. Um, I, I would, I just, I would guess at it maybe that you probably have 250 to 500 people who do it. I, I, it's something you could figure out, I suppose, but there are people who come from, I know people have come from as far away as Korea, uh, Japan, and these are typically expats. Uh, and, and Buffalo's got such a huge expat population who come back. Uh, there's one, uh, another funny team name um, is uh, called the Lymph Lymphomaniacs. That's kind a great a name. Yeah, and it, it's, um, it's a young woman who, uh, is a cancer survivor who is also an oncology nurse at Roswell. So wow. she she translated her personal experience into her professional commitment. And her sister, who lives out in uh, the LA area, comes in for it every year. And uh, they've got a great team. They're a lot of fun. They they do a lot of fundraising stuff. So so yeah, you get a lot of people who come from all over the country for it. So, so folks, this weekend will be getting back on the road again, saddling up. Uh, I know I get my bike tuned up every year to do the ride and, and get it set to go. And uh, I know you have a lot of local bike shops that are there and help out um, on day of, which is super cool. Uh, and to that point, extending it, you couldn't do this. And the ride for Roswell couldn't happen without speaking of community, um, not only uh, sponsorship, but the volunteers and the UB and the localities with their police forces and all of that, that the ride goes through. So talk a little bit to that uh, about how this couldn't happen without all of those folks. Yeah, well, we, we get about a thousand volunteers uh, on the ground and the, there are volunteers who are working on it all year. Uh, and it kind of, of course it peaks now, uh, you know, you could see it, you know, peaking over the last two, three, four weeks or so. Um, so, but in addition to that, there's also the, the fire police who come from all the different uh, volunteer fire departments throughout the area. And, and because the ride, traditionally the ride was, was Erie, Niagara, um, Orleans, and I think it might have touched into Genesee County a little bit for the 100 mile route. So you get all these different volunteer fire departments and you have the same thing, Bull, which is you know, it's just not at all unusual for the volunteer fire guys to have a cancer experience in their family. So they're into it too, you know, and those are the people you see on the road directing traffic and all that kind of stuff like that. And then you have the route guides who are out there with their, with their flags, uh, watching over intersections and are slowing the riders down and all that. Uh, families or teams that get together and, and volunteer for the rest stops. And of course the rest stops are uh, one of the popular aspects of the you mentioned peanut butter and jelly before which is one of my favorites too but you know you can you could basically consider the ride kind of like a buffet if you wanted to you know you could just bounce bounce from one sandwich to the next and whatever and then of course at the end a lot of the uh, team tents will have some beer or some more food and all that stuff like that i don't think people i don't think there's a calorie deficit for the ride <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so either. I don't think, to, think so either. Yeah. Um, one thing I learned that I can tell you is that for those of us who aren't regular cyclists, cycling shirts aren't flatteringly form-fitting. Um, yeah, like I got a little midsection thing going on. And when you're wearing a cycling shirt, it's not 
It's not necessarily. I mean, the fashion police have been there waiting. Put yeah. it that way. Uh, when I yeah, that, up, so. that, yeah, they're not, they're. <laughs> Yeah, they're not cut out for everybody. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but trying to think of a kind way to say it. I can't. Well, I mean, there there are certainly worse things, right? So, um, yeah. we 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 suck it up and we don't care, and we we think about why we're doing what we're doing. Um, what's the most unique? So, I should know this, but ha have there been people? Um, have there been unicyclists that have done this? Have you ever? let someone ride a big wheel in the ride for oh, yeah. Roswell. Yeah? Yeah, actually, there's a friend of mine, a guy named Ron Smolin, is riding around Grand Island, I think Thursday or Friday on a high wheel bike. And he did last year, uh, he did the ride out of Akron uh, on his high wheeler. And he's and he's done the ride uh, for a number of years doing that. He, he had another, he used to work, I think he used to work at Praxair. And he and another guy from Praxair both had high wheel bikes and did it. So yeah, you see that. You, you see a lot of, a lot of different kinds of bikes you'll see people on tandems you know baby carriers all that kind of stuff like that um the high wheel is probably the most unusual one that i've seen anyway but there are probably other ones out there i just missed them i didn't see them but yeah a lot, a lot of different a lot of different bikes have you uh do you still own your 1975 cross-country schwinn oh uh, no it was stolen come on yeah it was stolen and uh Let's see. Uh, how did that work out? Well, actually, I have, I had a good story. It was stolen, and I I got a uh, I got a tip about how it, where it might be, and after two or three months of hunting for it, I actually recovered it. Uh, and um, there's a lot. It's a good story. Probably not not safe for work. I guess would be the way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. but you you recovered it, and you still have it. No, I no, I don't have it. I, I can't remember what I did with it. Uh, and it would be in the antique category, by sure. the anyway. Yeah, you because know, bikes have changed so much. Yeah, they they weigh uh, how much less than they did then? Yeah, well, different material. Uh, right. you know, um, everything was steel steel back then, and then bikes now are most a lot of them are carbon fiber, which is a whole different thing. So yeah, that's one of the and then also the disc brakes and the the, the shifting, the handlebar shifting, and all that. You know, so things are really different. For sure. Uh, so I don't know if I had kept it, I don't know what I would be doing with it. It's, you know, like a lot of people probably have bikes in their basement or, you know, their attic or their garage that they don't know what to do with. So uh, just the way things are. It's impressive that you did that. And also more impressive that you started now 27 years ago, the Ride for Roswell, the founder of the Ride for Roswell, who's got a big weekend ahead of him. And certainly all month is a big month for uh, Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center and the Ride for Roswell. Rideforroswell.org. It's never too late to be part of it, whether you're riding or volunteering. Please get involved. I promise you that you will love this event. As I've said many times, not only on this right now, it is my favorite community fundraiser that I'm a part of every single year here in Western New York because there's so many different people with so many different stories. It's never the same uh, year in and year out. And obviously the money's raised that you will ultimately by doing the ride, go to an incredible cause uh, with our friends downtown at Roswell. So Mitch, awesome to see you. Thank you for being the person that had it up here and then put it to paper and then presented and making this what it has become certainly over our last 26, seven years and uh, enjoy the weekend, obviously, and the festivities and the ride itself. Yeah, and I want to thank you too, Bull. Uh, thanks for doing the ride and uh, thanks for making the time to do this. Absolutely. Like I said, it's yeah. one of my favorite things. Uh, enjoy the weekend. You too. Thank you, man. Okay, take care. Bye.